Deciding who is right in the South China Sea dispute involving China, Vietnam, Philippines, Malaysia, and Indonesia is a complicated issue. By the end of this video, you'll understand different viewpoints and factors related to the dispute. This will help you make a more informed opinion about the situation. Territorial disputes in the South China Sea involve conflicting islands and maritime claims in the region by several sovereign states namely China, Taiwan, Brunei, Malaysia, the Philippines, and Vietnam. The disputes involve islands, reefs, banks, and other features of the South China Sea, including the Spartley Islands, Parasol Islands, Scarborough Shoal, and various boundaries in the Gulf of Tonkin. The waters near the Indonesian Natuna Islands, which some regard as geographically part of the South China Sea, are disputed as well. About $3 trillion in global trade moves through the South China Sea each year, making a third of all worldwide maritime trade. China heavily depends on this route, with 80% of its energy imports and 39% of its total trade passing through the South China Sea. The countries claiming parts of this sea are keen on securing rights to fishing, exploring and possibly extracting oil and natural gas from the seabed and controlling crucial shipping lanes. The ongoing disputes not only affect trade but also pose challenges to maritime security in the region. In 1932, France officially said the Parasol and Spartley Islands were theirs. Both China and Japan did not like it and protested. Then in April 1933, France took control of the Spartleys, declared them part of their French Indochina, and claimed them as their own. In 1947, China said most of the South China Sea belonged to them. In 2013, China started building islands in the Spartley and Parasol Islands area. Vietnam and the Philippines had been doing small-scale island building for decades, but China joined later and did it on a much larger scale. From 2014 to 2016, China created more new islands than all other nations in history combined. By 2016, China had even placed military equipment on one of its man-made islands, which was different from what other claimants did. Vietnam, unlike China, faced little international criticism and even received support. The reason was seen in the slower and more defensively perceived nature of the Vietnam's island building project. In May 1939, Japan said the Parasol and Spartley Islands were theirs and occupied them. During World War II, Japan used these islands in the South China Sea for military reasons and said nobody else claimed them when they took control. Some historical records say that at least France had control over some of the places in that area during the 1930s. Imperial Japan gave up control of the islands in the South China Sea when they signed the Treaty of San Francisco on September 9, 1951. However, the treaty did not clearly say who the islands now belong to. During the negotiations for the treaty in 1951 and the first Taiwan Strait, crisis in 1958, China made different claims to these islands. China's claims in the South China Sea are marked by a line with nine dashes, known as the Nine Dash Line. Initially, it was actually an 11 dash line introduced by China in 1947 to assert its territorial claims in the South China Sea. The Geneva Accords of 1954, which concluded the First Indochina War, gave South Vietnam the parasols and Spartley Islands. In 1974, when North Vietnam won the war, China used military force in the Parasol Islands, seizing Yagong Island and the Crescent Group of Reefs from South Vietnam. The goal was to avoid these islands coming under North Vietnamese control, as North Vietnam was then aligned with the Soviet Union. In the late 1970s, the Philippines and Malaysia started claiming the Spartley Islands as part of their own territory. On June 11, 1978, President Ferdinand Marcos of the Philippines issued Presidential Decree No. 1596, declaring the northwestern part of the Spartley Islands 
called the Kalayan Island Group as Philippine territory. In 1988, China and Vietnam had a conflict near the Johnson Reef. China had permission to build observation posts in the Sparley Islands for ocean surveys, and one of those was allowed in the Sparley region. China chose Fury Cross Reef, which was not claimed by any of the state at the time. When China began building on Fury Cross Reef, Vietnam sent its navy to monitor. They clashed near the Johnson Reef, and after the clash, China occupied the Johnson Reef. In 1994, China took control of Mischief Reef, which is about 250 miles from the Philippine coast. This happened during a competition for energy resources in the Spotlys, which other countries were beginning their oil exploration activities. China didn't have a presence in the area. The occupation of Mischief Reef marked the first military clash between China and the Philippines. Between the 1990s and 2000s, who controls most of the Spartly and Paracel Islands hasn't changed much. China has full control of the Paracels. In the Spartlys, Vietnam has control over most with 29 features. The Philippines controls 8, Malaysia has 5, and China has control over 5 as well. So Vietnam controls most features of the South China Sea. But since 2011, tensions have been rising again in the area. In February, a Chinese frigate fired shots at Philippine fishing boats. In May, a clash between a Vietnamese oil and gas survey ship and three Chinese patrol vessels. In 2012, there was increased militarization of the islands. Taiwan started building an antenna tower and run away on Taiping Island. Vietnam also began upgrades and land reclamation on San Ke and West Reef Islands. In April, China took control of the Scarborough Shoal in response to the Philippine Navy's actions in the area. The South China Sea is believed to have abundant oil and natural gas, but the estimates vary. It has about 17 billion barrels of crude oil surpassing the oil-rich country of Kuwait with 13 billion barrels. However, conflicting claims in this resource-rich area have hindered the development and use of these resources. 
To address this, in November 2018, the Philippine and China agreed to a Memorandum of Understanding on Cooperation on Oil and Gas Development. This agreement emphasizes joint use, not ownership of the assets. Previously, aggressive Chinese naval patrols had discouraged Manila from exploring gas deposits in disputed waters, like the Reed Bank. This kind of agreement allows claimant states to work together in developing natural gas. Similar joint agreements have been used before with Malaysia and Vietnam, establishing a similar mechanism in 1992, and Malaysia and Thailand reaching agreements in 1997 for developing gas-rich disputed waters. The Philippines started searching for oil west of Palawan in 1970, focusing on Reed Bank. In 1976, they found gas while drilling a well. However, complaints from China stopped the exploration. On March 27, 1984, the first Philippine oil company found an oil field off Palawan, an island province near the South China Sea and the Sulu Sea. These oil fields provide 15% of Philippines' yearly oil consumption. Indonesia has consistently stated that it's not claiming any part of the South China Sea and often acts as a neutral mediator in the dispute. However, China's nine dash line, which they claim unilaterally, overlaps with Indonesia's exclusive economic zone near the Natuna Islands. Even though China recognizes Indonesia's ownership of the Natuna Islands, they argue that the waters around Natuna are considered Chinese. Indonesia promptly rejected China's claim, stating that China's nine dash line assertion over parts of the Natuna Islands is not legally justified. In November 2015, Indonesia's security chief mentioned that Indonesia might bring China to an international court. Indonesia submitted a statement to the Permanent Court of Arbitration addressing China's claim in the arbitration process. Indonesia's EZZ extends 370 kilometers from its shores. The South China Sea arbitration was a case where the Philippines took China to court under the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. It was about issues in the South China Sea, including China's Nine Dash Line. In 2016, the court ruled mostly in favor of the Philippines. The court said it would not decide on sovereignty or boundaries, but clarified that China's historical rights claims within the Nine Dash Line have no legal standing unless allowed under the An Clause. China and Taiwan rejected the ruling. The Philippines argued that China's nine dash line is invalid because it goes against unclass rules on exclusive economic zones and territorial seas. They say that since many features in the South China Sea, like most of these part of the islands, cannot support life, they cannot have their own continental shelf as defined in the convention. So, who do you think among these claimants have the right to the South China Sea?